Legends TV, this is your post-match analysis video for yesterday's very disappointing 1-0 home defeat against Reading at the Den. I don't usually enjoy doing the post-matches on a day after the game was so bad. However, plenty to talk about from yesterday, plenty of incident. I want to dip a little bit into our formation and our patterns of play or lack of them as well in this video. I'm going to start out by saying that I know yesterday was terrible. I don't know whether I don't come across properly in my full-time reactions. Don't forget as well, full-time reaction, I get a minute to two minutes to quickly talk about the game in the heat of the moment and go off memory, things that have recently happened. So I may miss things out. I may not always come across properly, although I was pretty sure that I did say yesterday, you know, this wasn't good. However, there is reasons that I don't think it was as bad or, or in the bigger picture and grand scheme of things, it's not as bad as some people are making out. And I'll tell you those reasons why now but look somebody in the comments saying dan you must be watching a good game it was terrible i know it was terrible as i said maybe some of you are fickle maybe i'm not coming across properly but it's definitely something getting lost in translation there so this is why i always come back to the game the next day after i've relaxed after i thought about it after i spoke to a couple of people's opinions that i really respect and i've watched the highlights and extended highlights back that's why i sit down and do this longer formatted video the day after the game so I'm not saying we was good yesterday by any stretch. Yes, we were shit. Uh, but I don't think that we're being fair in a sense that I always go back to it. Gary Rowett, 11 games without a win. 3-0 down against Middlesbrough away from home. Troy Parrott up front. Fucking Ryan Woods in midfield. Terrible team out. No real players and interest for me there thinking going forward. You know, well, we, we're going to get out of this shit because we've got X, Y, and Z and this player and that player. That game then stretched to 14. I wanted Rowett out. You all said I was crazy looking for views. Now, what I'm saying is this, look, and I'm not defending him because I'm going to show, as I always like to do, the other side of the coin in a minute. I haven't got into the team yet. But look, um, the, the reason is, is we are six games into the season. One, two, drawn one. Lost three, yeah? I think that's right off the top of my head. I should probably know that being a Millwall fan channel guy. But look, that's pretty sure that that's what it is. If it was 2-2-2, two, two and two, you know, two wins, two draws, two losses, I'd pretty much expect us to be around that bracket at this point of the season. We've had a fantastic run at home that we'll have to end at some point. Uh, but look, it wasn't good yesterday. And there's definitely, definitely no getting away from that fact. However, as I said, we're six games in. And we've recruited players, whether they turn out to be the right players or, or brilliant players for us. Um, but we've recruited them, and it's early, so they're going to need time to gel. On top of that, you know, you've had Shackleton come into the mix late, although I don't really rate me if I'm honest, but I'll get on to that. Honeyman uh, come in, played a couple of games, sent off, missed one, now he's back. You've had uh, Volksammer just come through the door. You've had Fleming injured. You've had Bradshaw injured. And Rowett is now trying to revert, although he keeps playing five at the back. He's trying to revert to this more positive two up front and someone in the ten. If he knows how to play that, being a defender himself and being quite, and I think it's fair to say, defence-minded manager, um, that that remains to be seen. However, what I'm saying is, look, we've got all these new players through the door, right? We've had, I think, six new players and probably more to come before the transfer deadline shuts on uh, Wednesday. So it's gonna, it could take time for those players to come in, settle and gel, and not a lot of them have played a lot of football together at a minute. So I'm saying, look, it's not as if these players, we're 30 games in, and these players are what we got, and we already know they're shit. They could well turn out to be shit. But at the minute, I just think it's a little bit premature to be going fucking crazy. I'm not like a lot of you as well. I was pretty sure that after we signed Charlie Criswell on loan and fucking re-signed Benicophobi, that we weren't going to go and get promoted. A lot of you thought we was going to win the league. And I said it at a time. Two low knees. Uh, Creswell never played in the division. Fleming's never played in the country and now he's been injured. So it's going to take time is what I'm getting at. Short story, extremely long. Let's get into starting 11. And so three changes were made from the team. That lost 2-0 away at Norwich last Friday. Again, fair enough. Can't argue with it. You've got Fleming coming back from injury. You've got Volksam and Nara legible. he come off the bench once or twice. So he was in contention. Bradshaw's back from injury again. He usually combines well with Benick, although that didn't really happen yesterday, but I'll get into that. Don't think it was their fault, although a lot of you were massively fucking pointing fingers at a phobia again, and I'll tell you really why, in my opinion, you probably shouldn't have been. But look, three changes were made for the team. That lost at Norwich. Jake Cooper come back into the team, and Ryan Leonard dropped out, injured hamstring, will be out for around two months. Billy Mitchell dropped out, and Jamie Shackle to come in to replace him. And up front, Tyler Bury came out, and the re- combination, the re-enlightenment of the deadly duo. 24 goals between them last season. Don't forget that. Benica Fobe and Tom 
Bradshaw. Getting into the game, you know, I thought we started quite well. I thought we looked on the front foot, we looked exciting, we got a lot of confidence at home. Uh, Reading comes to town, of course, on the back of back-to-back -back wins and back-to-back -back clean sheets. But that was at the Majeski, and as we know, and as we keep saying, we need to keep it this way. And it may well go back to us winning loads of games at home. I think that was our first defeat in 14 at the Den, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I think I saw that online. Look, we need to make the Den a fortress. And I felt we started well on the front foot. Uh, ball into the box. Tom Bradshaw, flick header. Good save from their goalkeeper in the near post. I was sort of in line with that, and he sort of really clawed that from behind him. So we start well. And then after that, it just starts to go tits up. And I can't really explain why. We had no momentum. We had no rhythm. And, and, and the formation we're playing, again, I'll go back to this now while, while it's fresh in my mind. I like the idea of, of the 10. I've always said player 10, okay? A lot of you don't want five at the back. I don't really want that, but I think that's going to be a given. Uh, although he did change the formation, didn't he, in the second half when he was chasing the game. But look, I like the idea of it. I think potentially if the players that we got in that are good players, that are better than the level of players that we usually get, if they do gel and mould and row it, knows in his mind how he wants to play this pattern and the, and, the, and this uh, shape, you know, and, and this, this structure, then I feel that it could work. The issue I've got around is I'm not sure he know he does know how to do that. But look, again, look, time will tell. Six games in, he's had to, he's had to fucking beg, borrow and still bringing this one, that one goes out, that one's suspended, that one's injured, now Ryan Leonard's out, Bennett's out. So he, he does keep having to reassess and, and replug players here and there. So hopefully he does get it to work. My worry is going forward that... He doesn't know how to. And at the minute, I've had a good think about this as well. The way we play, okay, we play three centre-backs. And we play Danny McNamara, right wing-back. We play Scott Malone, left wing-back. Then you've got Shackleton, Saville, Honeyman in midfield, okay. Two of those three yesterday I thought were terrible. And that was Shackleton. Who, I'll be honest with you, I don't think he's up to the level. And I don't think we needed him. Not up to the level, right, because he has played for Leeds at this level. But it's not working out for him. Although it's early, as I said, at Mill, I don't really rate him. I don't think he's any better than what we already had or what we've got in other other positions. I know he, he can be versatile. Not bad for a squad player, but every second ball, yes, he shouldn't seem to be a tackle for him. Touch tackle. On the other hand of that, uh, George Arnie just kept giving the ball away. Um, and the wing-backs, getting back to them, we never go through the middle of the pitch. And Reading showed us yesterday that it can be done because they carved us open twice. And what that came from was similar to when Swansea scored against us. Passing straight through the middle, continue your run. Never pass and stay still. You pass and you keep moving. And we can't create anything coming through the centre of the pitch, okay? So we are solely reliant on our wing backs getting down the getting down the right areas and getting crosses into the box. Now, no disrespect to Danny McNamara or Scott Malone, but they're not fucking Andy Robertson and Trent, are they? So their productivity, you tell me, say it or put it in the screen. You don't say it because I won't hear you. Put it in the comments right below. Do you think that their accuracy on their crosses is enough for us to be the only way to be creating goals other than set pieces? My answer to that would be no. Scott Malone isn't a great full stop in my opinion. He could take a dead ball. I, literally, I can't move any, anymore. I'm fucking 18 stone, 42. I've got no kneecaps left. Put me on a pitch, I can still whip a dead ball. It ain't a problem. So that's not enough for me to keep Scott Malone in the side. Danny McNamara, young Millwall player, done really well, progressed really quickly, gets down the wings, defends really well. But his final ball at times does have a lot to be desired. So we're solely reliant on those wingers putting in, or those wing backs, sorry, putting in crosses for our strikers, Benikafobi and Tom Bradshaw. Now, Bradshaw and Afobi are probably, what, 5'9 and 5'10 height wise. So balls pump 70 foot in the air, they're no good to them, right? And yesterday, people were fuming because we're pumping balls up to them, and Nabi Saar, probably 6'4, and his, his mate next to him, 6'5. The fucking chuckle brothers in the middle just dink, dink, win everything. That is not Tom Bradshaw's game. I've said it a million times before. And Benic Afobi, although some of you say he's lazy and he got so much unwarranted shit yesterday, Afobi, right? I want my strikers, me personally, to stay central, combine in the right areas and finish their chances, okay? Benic Afobi's game is not and has not and will, never will be receiving his ball. Even, even high balls, okay, granted. But we want to know our centre forward can have it into his feet hold it up and lay it off and then go again. But that's not his game, okay? And it's not Bradshaw's game either, unfortunately. You're probably saying, well, what is their game? Well, look, working hard and scoring goals in, in the right areas is what they will do. And they have done last season, 24 goals between them. So you need to play to your striker's strengths to create them chances. But not only are we not playing to their strengths, we're also not creating any chances from anywhere across the midfield either. 
and, and, and it just isn't working out. And we need to find new ways. And as I said, this may be why the 10 is now, because I like Honeyman, but I'm starting to like him less in a 10. I think he's more, he is, if I'm honest, he's a bit of a glorified Ben Thompson. Right, he's he's a he's a higher level than Thompson. But he'll run around, he'll kick people, he'll he'll upset a few. He can play as well when he moves the ball nice and quickly. I do like that, and he can turn play over, and he's got pace, he's got energy, he's around the pitch. But I think we need more than that in that ten. And going back to why I'm defending Rowett slightly, I think that if you can ignite Fleming, you know, or even Bury in there and get him a good run on the side, get a settled side, and get practicing this formation we now want to play, and Rowett knows how to do that then it could work. And as I said, it's only six games in. So let's not shit the bed just yet. Yesterday, Benicophobi, honestly, he is playing on the shoulder of the final defender, okay? He's on the inside of the defender. The defender's on the outside of him. They're both running towards the North Stand. We're playing in the first half. And Honeyman's over here, okay? I love all these little hand movements I do. Anyway, Honeyman is going to clip it. Afobi's here. So he's on the blind side of the defender, exactly where he wants to be. He knows where Honeyman's going to play the ball. And then if Honeyman plays it right, he'll, he'll make his run, pull off the back of him, and he'll be in on goal. It was a difficult pass for Honeyman, and I've got no issue with it that it didn't come off because he tried, like I say, he didn't just stick to the two-yard pass, two-yard pass. Oh, I don't want it. You have it. You have it. Let's stick it wide. Let's go back to Bart. He tried to clip the pass. A phobia was ready to make that run, and the pass didn't make it, or the defender read it, and he cut it out, and they went, and people were going, fucking hell, phobia. Fucking move. He was ready to make his run in on goal to shoot. And the ball was not delivered right from George Honeyman. As I said, it was a difficult pass to make. And unfortunately, on this occasion, Honeyman didn't manage to pull it off. But I think people were pointing fingers in the wrong areas. Again, yesterday, going, wow, fucking Cooper. Listen, Jake Cooper, Sean Hutchinson and Murray Wallace are probably the last of the old school type centre-backs, okay? They're snot-blowing, gum-showing, big, horrible, defend, fucking headers, win it. Defenders win it. Defenders defend. That's it. They can't play out, okay? We know they can't play out. But we didn't lose the game because Jay Cooper, in fact, he had no involvement in the goal. It was sort of between Hutchinson and, and Murray Wallace, probably to blame, but I'll get onto that in a minute. Could be a long one today, I do apologise. I'm a little bit, again, I've enjoyed doing this video today. Usually a one new loss at home, not many shots and goal. I'll be like, oh, for fuck's sake, I've got a film. But I couldn't wait to talk about it today because I think people are losing focus a bit of what's important and are losing charge here. You know, and Cooper was not to blame for yesterday's result. The back three were not to blame. Although they let one in, they can't keep them all out. Bart can't keep them all out and we need to be able to concede one at home but go well that's alright because we'll probably score two or three the fact that we've let a goal in and gone well that's game over and it's not to do with the strikers right it's not to do with the defenders they don't let many goals in those three and I did say if you revert back to those three and take Creswell out we'd be a lot tired at the back okay which I felt at points we watched yesterday and I just feel a lot better with those three in the back three but look the problem is one are we creating our chances the midfield two the wing backs uh, Rowett's relying too heavily on them to get the amount of balls in to a good standard we need and they can't do that again no disrespect to them two but they're not Trent and they're not fucking Andy and Roberto Carlos and Andy Robertson so it ain't going to happen so let me go through the middle of the pitch but that then is down to Rowett to pick the right players and, and, and pay patterns of play to get us through the middle of that pitch and you see teams do it I was sitting there last night giving me the fucking um I'm watching the EFL the quest and I've tried to I've forgotten that this morning because I had a bottle of red what team was this? Because it was a League 2 team, and I know it's a different level, but they're playing at a level that's, that's you know, in line with where they are. They're, they're passing, they're overlapping, they're keeping going. Balls through the middle, one-twos, people pulling off defenders and linking in. And it, it's, I think it's quite simple to try these things, you know, but we get the ball, we go wide, we go down the wing, we get the ball in an area where we could cross the ball in. Oh, no, we'll come back one, we'll go across one, we'll go back, centre half, across the back line, back to bar. And it's just shit, like, it's just no good. We need to learn... If we're going to stick with his 10, how to fucking play a 10. And Fleming could be the key to that. But again, as I said, he's not really been around it. Volksam has just turned up. So I feel that we have got, a, you know, we've got the players, I think, now. We've got good individuals. But I think we look less of a team than ever yesterday, even without Jed. And people say it's all about Jed. And, and you know, he's an individual. Well done to him. Scored his first two goals for fucking West Brom yesterday. But anyway, I think we look really, you know, in like a team full of individuals yesterday. We didn't look like a team at all. Uh, and then from that point, obviously, when... We had the early chance. I said we just went to shit. They ended up scoring a goal. It's a free kick. Watched it back a few times. They're all in the mix there. And Hutchins has actually got two or three around him. And don't even say to anyone, can someone help me out here or whatever. Okay. Cooper is in, in the vicinity and Murray Wallace is there as well. But it's actually Scott Malone's not marking anyone. I'm not blaming Malone. But Hutchinson probably should have pulled Malone in. He didn't. First header at the front post. Flicked over the top. Murray Wallace's man gets in behind him. And we're 1-0 down. But we just couldn't. 
you know, we just couldn't get anything going yesterday. Well, we, honestly, and I, I'll go back to you and you'll say, oh, you, you love him. We lost without Billy Mitchell in that midfield. He is the glue that holds that team together. We fucked ourselves yesterday by not starting him, and we fucked ourselves back in the last season when he put Keith Belt in instead of being against Birmingham, and, and exactly the same thing happened. We cost ourselves a shot at the playoffs. He closes the distance. He is fucking everywhere on that pitch. And again, you go, we don't pass forward. This is not... The reason he doesn't pass forward, okay, or any other yesterday, people weren't passing forward or we were just lumping balls. It's because there's no there's no right shape. There's no patterns of play that's being instilled in him in training. I'd like to say, I'd love to know what they're doing in training, but I do know what they're doing in training, but I can't fucking say anything. So, look, we need to work on our forward thinking patterns, Gaffer. If you are watching, you need to get ideas. And if you ain't got any ideas, and a lot of people do point the fingers at Adam Barrett, Paul Robinson, Paul Robinson was a great player, by the way, the left-footed West Brom Paul Robinson. So we're not blaming these players, but them along with Rowett and even Kevin Nugent, who was the 23's boss, and the other Paul Robinson, who was a middle legend, you know, they're not really involved in the first team, but everyone at the club in a senior position is a defender. And, and we need we need, we need, need a striker coach, you know, we need, I don't know, we need, a, we need Teddy Sheridan in to, you know, show people how to pull off in a 10 and, and do bits. I'm joking, we ain't going to get Sheridan in, but look, we need... Something different. We need to learn how to play in this new system that Rowett wants to play. Because if he can't do it, he might as well fuck it off and revert back to where he was. I feel that this this new formation is killing Tyler Bury a bit as well because he's not a striker, right? I think he could sit in that ten and and just allow him to be lazy, allow him to link play because we we got nothing going through the middle of the pitch. And it begs the question: What are they doing? All week in training. Second half, I wasn't too fussed because I know we come out and we have a good go at the cold blow lane. I also done running half time meal full time again and I put a score on it this week. So that'd have been 550 sheets. Hashtag pay me, but that didn't fucking come in. But look, I didn't care in the end. I just would have took a point. That's all I cared about. And as the game went on, we didn't play into their hands, really, but they just crowded us out and it was a little bit. It was a bit, a little bit like pub football at the times, so, you know, with, with, with the melees in the box and ball bouncing around. We couldn't create anything clear cut. Um, and again, I'll say, Reading did twice, didn't they? Cut through us, literally like a knife through butter. First time Hendrick gets through, because what he does, he doesn't stand still. He gives and he goes, and the players in the centre of the pitch, they're not, they're not, you know, they're confident enough to receive the ball under pressure and try and link players in. No, they're not thinking, fuck that, don't give it to me, and passing it backwards or passing it sideways. So the ball through the middle of the pitch was perfect. Hendrick does really well, good player, great. I really liked him when he done done really well in the World Cup a few years ago, didn't he? Um, Rolls it straight at Bolkowski, who saves it. Shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be anywhere near that bar, but he does save it. It's not a great shot from Hendrick. And then again, when we're chasing the game, Shane Long clean through one on one. Very uh, unlike Shane Long to miss that one. So Paul Winks actually said during his interview on the, uh, I was going to say Quest. It's not even on Quest anymore. It's ITV Four. Um, that he actually had a go at his players at full time. You know why? Have, what we should have won that game clearly two, three nil. Debatable because I thought we did put pressure on on second half, but without clear-cut chances, and they've had, he's right, they had their clear-cut chances, didn't stick away. Of course, we did think that we was back in the game, George Savile free kick, Jake Cooper comes up, heads it, and it's sort of, again, it's happened to a phobia before. I think when Matt Smith had one once, he hit a phobia on there, when it gets uh, Fulham a couple of years ago, goes in. Anyway, it sort of hits a phobia and goes in. Offside given, <laughs> who's going fucking mad giving it to the Reading fans? It's fucking all horrible down there when it happens. But even then, like, I know it got disallowed, but... The, the, the feel of adulation and like the, the outpouring of fucking come on like get that stress out even though he got disallowed he did get a little bit of that out but he was even more so frustrated when it did turn out it was offside I watched it back I posted last night on the, on the group chat to the boys that wasn't offside I've looked back this morning I'm going to put it on the screen now it's only a screen grab there's one and there's two now that is it looks slightly offside to me there but don't forget, we are not banging line with it. And I think the advantage used to go with the striker. Then I don't think it does anymore. But look, you've seen them given. Unfortunately for us, this is Mill when it wasn't given. And after that, it was pretty much it. And, you know, it's, it wasn't a good day, was it? It was not a good day at the office. However, I've come away. You know, the atmosphere again was good. Um, and there was incident, as I said. And, and, and I did feel like I'd come away from the game a little bit like... Whew, a little bit worn out, a little bit, yeah, plenty to talk about, lots to reflect on, but not the result we wanted. And as a result, ready and go top of the division. One other thing I wanted to say as well, and I'm sure this stuff I forgot, but there you go, it is what it is now, is that the transfer window closes on Wednesday. Um, and this sort of plays in with, with the pattern that we're playing now, right? We've got, when they're on the pitch now, Savile, Volsammer, fucking uh, Fleming, they're all blonde, they're all the same sort of height, and I can't work out who's who, but 
on that basis, we brought in Honeyman, Shackleton. You know, they're not the tallest bunch in the world, which doesn't matter. But he's gone and thrown Jake Cooper up front. Now, to me, if your striking options are... All right, Bury's a bit different. He's more of a tricky player. A Foby, Bradshaw, Volsammer, Fleming. They're all... They're all similar types. None of them are... Well, they're not all similar types, but none of them are a, a Matt Smith type, is what I'm saying. And if you're going to keep throwing fucking Cooper in, in the mix up front, in a panic, then I would suggest maybe try and go and get a strike. We are crying out for, like, if we're going to keep putting all these crosses in the box. Which, by the way, we going to do till the fucking cows come home and Matt Namara and Malone can get every cross right, Ben Ikafobi and Tom Bradshaw are not going to win their medals because they're fucking here and the big lumps are here. So, mate, like, I watched him last night on, the, on, again, the Quest getting a great fucking bit of coverage here. A Gary Medin type. That's the sort of striker we need. So, I don't know we're buying all these types of players that are quite small in stature, similar in stature, and, you know, we, do we need a big horrible target, man, for a plan B? Because, Fran, you sent her off. That's like... That's Holloway-esque, man. We'll just fucking put everyone on up front and see what happens. And that ain't no good for us. So, I think four days, Wednesday, the championship um, transfer window closes. I'm not sure if that includes loans as well. Someone will correct me in the comments and let me know. But, um, look, we need something here because... I think we've got a national break coming up saying that. But Rowett needs to start... Now he's getting people fit, saying, this is my team. This is what I'm going to stick with. This is how we're going to play and learn to play with a 10 learn that these wing backs aren't getting the productivity that we need from them so we need to find other options to feed our strikers who will score goals in this division if given a chance i'm going to stop talking now because that feels like i've fucking been here about an hour but anyway look that's your post-match analysis done i'll kick myself later because there's things i definitely wanted to say i definitely want to comment on my full-time reaction you know people misunderstanding what i'm saying because it, it was shit yesterday that cooper up front um the row structure and the way we're going to play and being a bit patient because these players all ain't been here two years and we know their shit and we finished 18th last season. We had a good finish last season. We've had a little bit of ambition in the transfer window. You can't say we didn't because you all fucking was like, and Mur announced promotion. Please no one ever say Mur announced prom promotion again. Not the Mur bit because you don't say that. But um, don't. Please don't. Just look, we are where we are. We've got new players in. It's early in the season. That's all I'm saying. However, I'm not confident that Rowett is going to know how to play these players in the right places and get them firing coming forward. That's my honest opinion. I'm backing him because I'm saying, wait, let's wait and see. But if you want my honest opinion, I, I don't and I've never, never ever wanted him in charge. But I'm dealing with the consequences of what it is now and trying to get behind it a little bit. So there you go. That's your post-match analysis done. It's going to be a busy week. I'll be back tomorrow for a preview because fuck knows why, but I'm going to Burnley on Tuesday. So you'll be uh, coverage from Burnley on Tuesday. There'll also be... A post-match Wednesday, but there's also going to be... I might even do that one live Wednesday, because the, I need to do a transfer deadline day stream on Wednesday as well, and then we're back in the mix Thursday for the return of Steve Morrison and Marlon Romeo next Saturday. If we don't go to Burnley and get a result, and then something don't happen next Saturday, I've got a fucking feeling that um, if it hasn't already, it could well start turning on the gaffer and the, the roof could come off the place in South Bermondsey next Saturday. But listen, this chill, I wasn't overconfident about yesterday. You're, you're good form at home, has to have blips at times. It's on the road, we need to sort it. And Tuesday, we travel to High Flying Burnley, won 5 1 away at Wigan yesterday. But listen, I'm going to shit on the preview now. Don't worry, because I've been saying this for about a week to the boys. We're going to do a meal warm. We're going to go and have a Gary Rowett masterclass, and you're all going to pull out the mm -hmm, fucking meme thing, whatever it is, and we're going to beat Burnley. But anyway, that is another video for another day, which is tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Oh, it's Bank Holiday. Get out and enjoy yourself. Come on, you lions.